when she wore the t-shirt with my name on it, it was a surreal experience. It's the most expensive billboard in the world. <laughs> She's a very bad, naughty girl. Madonna has always wanted to have her bottom smacked. She was such a free spirit in the way she was dancing around, and she just looked so cool. She had such her own style. When I go to a show, I want to be in fantasy world, and she does that. She, it's like when you go to see her shows, you're dreaming, you know? I love that. It's very cool. I was sure she was English. She couldn't be American. An American girl doesn't dress like that. We are particularly fond of people who admire Britain and stick two fingers up at the States. I think we do like that a lot. Tonight, Madonna hits London. But those eager fans who couldn't wait for Madge to come to us jetted out to Barcelona a few weeks ago for the opening night of her Drowned World Tour. We're in Barcelona! We're in Barcelona! I've been dreaming of Madonna yeah. every night. I've had sleepless nights. I've been so excited, so nervous. Now I'm actually here. <laughs> Nation's tempestuous affair with Madonna began way back in the last century, when Britain was at war with Argentina and the Iron Lady was on the throne. Just rejoice at that news and congratulate our forces and the Marines. Madonna hit London for the first time in 1982 to promote her debut single. She looked like what she was, a dancer who could sing a bit and just looked like she had a great time, you know, the sort of girl you want to meet in a club just for one night and just, you know, party the night away and then forget what her name was. It was like, I thought she's not going to last. In January 1984, Madonna made her debut appearance on Top of the Pops. At Top of the Pops with Holiday, uh, she was up against Cindy Lauper and they were probably neck and neck, I think, two girls from New York. Um, and uh, not much. It must be Madonna. She's the darling of the New York discos, and this is her hit single. It's called Holiday. Good. She was so street, so credible. Everything that Cindy Lauper wasn't really for kids to relate to. And that was a real turning point, I think. And suddenly Madonna just leapt ahead. And I thought, wow. <laughs> That's Madonna. And uh, I don't know, there was just uh, what it was, a look in her eye or the fact that I'd heard her records or... I knew as soon as I saw her, I thought, oh, wow, this one's going to change everything. I wasn't really sure how I felt about that, if I'm very honest. <laughs> she was quite plump. She was almost as plump as one of those girls from Hearsay. She was a plump thing. She was a plump little girl. But that was before she got, you know, into the mad exercise that she does. 8,000 sit-ups a day, I think, is what she's on at the moment. You could almost smell her on the screen, couldn't you? That sort of ripe, slightly fermenting, almost, with sexuality, like a very juicy pear. I remember Holiday very well. Uh, lots of kind of torn little bits of skirt and lots of little black bands around her wrist and jewellery and excessive makeup and very thick eyebrows. Well, Madonna, when she first came out, I remember she was quite chubby. Hairy armpits, that is one thing I remember. It was all a bit natural and um, 
a little dirty, really. You know, she, she looked like she needed a good scrub up, really. She was dressing in a forbidden way. She had, you know, lacy bras and, and lacy stockings, and um, she exposed her, her always the midriff top and the belly button. If you had even a barely passable midriff, you were desperate to show it off. You were desperate to have one of those T-shirts that was on one shoulder and then it was big slash necks that fell off oh so accidentally. She looked like a rag doll to me, because she had always all bits coming out of her hair, bits of rag, bits of old wedding dress, bits of my mum's old curtains, 700 bangles on each wrist. She must have weighed a ton. The look was very, very, very good. With like the Creole uh, earring and with like the little top in fishnet, you know, just showing the, the nombril. The little boots with little ears. She was fantastic and a lot, a lot, a lot of bracelet and of course, crucified. It was stuff you could get from junk shops, charity shops. Even, you know, all you had to do was make sure there wasn't too much wee stain on your things and you could pull off a Madonna look quite easily for about five pounds. She did empower a lot of young girls and she said to young girls, dare to be different, look a bit funny, wear all the same kind of funny old rubbish I'm wearing and be proud to be like that. I remember when I had like, you know, the little Madonna skirts and you know, I put the gloves. I still do that now. I'm retarded. I still have the little gloves that you put on and I cut them off. Yeah, everybody wants to be Madonna. I was a real tomboy and then to suddenly be into kind of Madonna stuff was very weird. And I realized when I was older, the connection was actually kind of power in a way. Um, that, that is very attractive to people. If you think that you can have power over someone else by dressing a particular way or being a particular way, it's an attractive quality. Make everything all right, all right. Stop right, stop, I tonight. There I was 14. That's the hat from, um, from the Who's That Girl era. My um, dad didn't didn't like it at all. But what did he think? It's a bit Madonna scary because you've got yeah. blatantly in your underwear. Yeah, I know. But I mean, it was only in my bedroom with my best yeah. friend. But the brilliant thing was, I brought them into school once because I wanted to share them to one of my best friends, and everyone saw them. And then gradually, what, the and whole school, oh, yeah, God. and the whole school um, found out about them, and I started selling them <laughs> to everyone in my school. I actually made money. It was really cool. <laughs> But it, they, she inspired me. She's so fresh, she's so exciting, she's live in the studio. It's Madonna. You just won't believe this, like a virgin. Watch this. Madonna insisted on wearing this bright pink wig and uh, Rob Dickens and I went down there and said, please don't wear this wig. Um, you know, you've got blonde hair, you're fantastic. The wig's terrible, don't do it, you know. And she insisted she wear it and just did a stunningly cool performance. Madonna, it was probably the Like a Virgin days. And I was quite young, actually. I, I don't remember how old I was. I was definitely under 10. And I was, it was a bit embarrassing, because you know the whole virgin thing. But, um, so I pretended to like it. I was like, oh, no, no, I don't like her. But really, inside, I thought she was great. And um, there was just something about I think when I was young, it was something that I aspired to be. And um, she was such a free spirit in the way she was dancing around and she just looked so cool, she had such her own style. But I, 
don't know what all the big media fuss was about because, all right, she was a bit of a slapper, yes, but she was singing like a virgin. Goodness knows what she was trying to say with that video. Actually, there was a point where there was a discussion with my friends as to, is that what we do on our wedding night? Wear a wedding dress and then just kind of writhe around. Well, it's a perfect pop statement, isn't it? You know, to have a, a song as catchy as Like a Virgin that, that six-year-olds and seven-year-olds can sing along to in, in a white uh, fairy queen outfit that six and seven-year-olds would love. And then with all the trappings of subversion of, of rosary beads and, and little crosses and things like that, it was perfect. loved to taunt people, I think, you know, and, and the Catholic Church as well. Um, even the song Like a Virgin would have upset so many people. I remember her once saying, I like to wear a crucifix because I like to have a naked man close to me. My dad would go every now and again, he'd go to school. Mm. and stuff like that, but you know, he never sort of tried to stop me from watching it or anything. Oh, my dad did. <laughs> yeah. My mum was, a, I don't know actually, no, I don't know my mum's technical, but my dad didn't mind me watching it. There built up quite a strong anti-Madonna movement among men of a certain age sort of the kind of men who might have daughters at that age who thought, oh my goodness, if my daughter is going to go out looking like that. Although many of their parents cringe every time she squirms, after a string of top ten hits, she's become the darling of the teeny boppers and inspired a generation to copy her distinctive style. Madonna, the girl who's made a fortune out of looking like a tramp and who's attracted the envy and admiration of millions of good girls. I like the way she acts because I think all women should be able to act like they want without being run down by men at all. She's got, she's got everything. She's worked her way up and she's used people that way. What does your mum think of Madonna? Um, not much. Well, most parents don't really. They think she's bad. My mother would switch the television off if she came on. Yeah, uh, it was a bit too much. There was, or, or you get that disapproving Indian thing of. Poor girl, <laughs> she's not well. <laughs> she's a very bad, naughty girl. Madonna has always wanted to have her bottom smacked. And the thing about Madonna having her bottom smacked is you know damn well she'd really, really enjoy it. It is that sort of, yeah, here I am in a wedding dress, but I've got no pants on, and I'm going to pull the dress up over my head and bend over. Please spank my body. dogs, you know, in the film, and they talk about how they, their theory on it is that for the first time she's had a guy with a really big, you know, um, penis, and that's why she feels like a virgin, and you can take it on so many levels, and it's hilarious. Let me tell you what like a virgin is about. Pain. Pain. Chew, Toby, chew. It hurts. It hurts her. It shouldn't hurt. You know, her pussy should be bubbling up by now, but when this cat fucks her, it hurts. It hurts just like it did the first time. You see, the pain is reminding a fuck machine what it was once like to be a virgin. Hence, like a virgin.
came back 87. Who's that girl? Looking toned, muscular, fit. She'd obviously been working out and stuff. She'd obviously was fed up with all the fat, plump Italian girl jibes, which, you know, you can take it from a few mates, but when you're getting it from newspapers and television channels from around the world, it's gonna make you wanna either cut your throat or work out. And she did the right thing, she worked out. <laughs> It's fun. I mean, I lost a bit of weight because I had to sort of chase her around the park and jog. I mean, I think we had daily rotors of who was going to follow her around that day or that week or that month. Um, and, you know, I have to tell you that <laughs> if she didn't like that, you know, she could have checked into a private clinic in Switzerland and sort of worked out there. <laughs> about a time when I meditate so it, it's spiritually it's great for me it's when I sort of tune everything out all the problems all the stress all the requests all the demands all the expectations and I just run it's very it sounds really corny but it's really zen like please if you're going to bring attention to yourself, what the perfect way? Oh, I just want a private moment to myself. I'm going jogging with about 70 photographers and 47 bodyguards. We English girls, you know, would look at her muscles and say, my, my, you know, and we might, like, occasionally go for a fast walk down to the shops to pick up our fags, you know, we wouldn't actually go down the gym. Inspire me to jog, not in a million years. <laughs> Slender tone, lying on my tummy, having a machine strapped to my ass. Great, let the machine do the work for me. We used to laugh at the whole the whole gym culture, you know, the idea of, of women doing that fast walking with those silly little metal bars along along a, along the prom at Miami or something was quite funny and very American. And you know, you, you expect them to be doing it in pink and with that headband around and blonde hair and with puffed up lips. And Madonna didn't quite fit that that stereotype. She was a bit harder looking than that. And Sean Penn as well, it made it so alien. Yeah. So, she was so American as well. That really frustrated me. You what? Because you can't imitate that. It was the time when she became the least accessible of her whole career. I've wanted to um, put my, I've, yeah, I've, I've wanted to uh, taste a bit more of Madonna. So I've wanted to you need to follow her around. I mean, that to me is something completely foreign, and I could never understand wanting to follow her around. I don't know, it's like a feeling of getting closer to someone that you've been sort of idolising for years. It's like a drug, you have to keep going back for more. You've got it confused. You've crossed this kind of weird line of kind of stalking, I kind of. <laughs> oh no, I can pass what I do is stalking. No. Okay, this is good for me. My message has always been to be yourself and to express yourself who you are. So I find it strange sometimes that people... I get these fan letters from girls sometimes that say, I love you, I love you so much and everything you say, it's so great that you do what you want to do and you don't care what people think and that's why I'm going to be exactly like you when I grow up. And that's not exactly what I'm meant for them to do. I'm so excited. If you talk, I will stop speaking, all right? Se parlate, se ne va! 
Allora. Allora. Ready? Ready. Okay. I'm an Italian American and I'm proud of it. I'm sure the Vatican did get very upset about uh, Madonna cavorting um, like the minx she is in a church with uh, a black Jesus uh, who got off the cross and got off with Madonna. And I can remember thinking, especially coming from a religious background and being a total Madonna fan, thinking, uh-oh, you know, has she gone too far this time? I remember the scandal that surrounded like a prayer, the whole thing of her sort of dancing around the foot of this black sort of saint and kissing his feet and he comes alive and then they start snogging and stuff. I couldn't see what the big deal was. I don't know whether it was because the whole Catholic thing, the guy coming to life and them getting off, or whether it was because it was a black guy and they're like, no, no! She was brought up Catholic. She knew what buttons to push. Well, Catholics don't like talking about sex, really, and she talked a lot about sex. Um, and Catholics don't like people who are very outspoken and who criticise, and she will say exactly what comes into her head. The Vatican coming down hard on you, did that, did that make you resent Catholicism? Did it make I already you... resented Catholicism, yeah. I mean, I, I resented it as a, as a child. You know, I, I thought that there were many unfair things about Catholicism. I remember myself and my sister Isabel, <laughs> it's really stupid, but at the very beginning of that song, the very first sound is, God, God. <laughs> and we used to put it just on a loop on Rewind. God, and then go, God. <laughs> So that's what we did with that song. God. And then we'd calm down laughing and then, you ready? God. <laughs> Gee, Lord, it seems like every time I'm standing in this circle before the show, I'm asking you for something extra special. Mm -hmm. But I'm here again. And they say, ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. So I'm begging you to give me a voice to sing with this evening. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Have a great show. Oh. Yeah, OK. Madonna. I said, no, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not true. It's, uh, it's her. And she was like truly like very nice. And saying me that uh, if I wanted to work with her for a tour, because she was preparing a tour, the Blonde Ambition tour. Uh, so if I was okay to make the clothes, of course. Of course you're going to remember when Madonna started working with Jean Paul Gaultier. Because then she came out with tits like this. She's coming on stage with these massive ice cream cones. When she wore that conical bra top, it was saying, you know, I have bosoms, but they're not kind of maternal comforting. They're not even a sort of sexual turn on. These are weapons. I mean, they were really scary. If she'd been a Bond villain, little guns would have come out from inside them and shot people. Was it metal? A metal, she's wearing a metal pointy bra. Good. He knew how to play with imagery. The fact that he always goes onto the catwalk at the end of his show, wearing a kilt. The man is not Scottish. By adopting an avant-garde designer like Gautier, she successfully repositioned herself to the 
much more sophisticated gay market. I was out on the gay scene in Edinburgh and it was when Madonna started kind of wearing suits. Me and my friends, you know, just would dress up in our suits and go down, all the lesbians together, out in the pub, and we thought we were the bee's knees. You had everyone with their hands above their faces, you know, doing it this way, that way. What are you looking at? You Egypt. Bogan was uh, a very gay thing, was it? It was, it was all the gay clubs, the, the, all the, the gay guys giving it all, because they can obviously, they're the best dancers in the world. Gay culture, black culture, they're the two main cultures that just dominate everything, from the clothes to the music and everything. So she does take a little bit wherever she goes. Everywhere you went, if they played that song, even if you could vogue or not, you had everyone with their hands above their faces going you know, this way, that way. And it was actually, I think she did it from a comedy point of view at the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> Terry Scott, Huey Green, demigods of the fashion scene, Bridget Clayderman, Fred Hoyle, Johnny Morris, Katie Boyle, the way they look, the clothes they wore, Robert Brunson, Jacques Delorme, Leslie Crowther, and Lord Reef, Norman Wisdom, Edmund Heath. I vogued. I was known to vogue when I was younger. Did, oh God, yeah, and everyone would take it so seriously. And this was the time, early 90s in Edinburgh, going to the gay clubs. And of course, the gay boys, you know, would vogue until they dropped. She has an enormous gay following. I mean, one of the, one of the gay papers in Britain, which is probably the biggest widely read one called Boys, um, you know, every time they mention her, they refer to her as our glorious leader. Gay men usually love women who are strong, presumably like their mothers, um, very sexy, very glamorous, love clothes, the limelight, a bit of drama. They tend to also like, of course, women who've got some terrible flaws, so a drink problem comes in useful. Now, unfortunately, Madonna doesn't score on that, although she has been divorced once, so that helps a little bit. Billy Garbo, Anne Monroe, Dietrich and DiMaggio. The thing with gay men is they, they do like their divas. She has such a presence that you cannot but think of her in, in the sense of diva. They had style, they had grace. Rita Hayward gave good face. Lauren, Catherine, Manitou, Betty Davis, we love you. I think part of the reason why Madonna is so popular with gay men is that she sort of courted them. And I think from quite early on in her career, she made it quite clear that she was very sort of gay friendly. Um, there was a statement she made about how every man should have another man's tongue in his mouth at least once. Carlton, come to mommy. Get in bed. You're sweating and you smell. <laughs> oh, your dick is big. I wouldn't hire fags that hate women. I kill fags that hate women. In fact, I'll kill anybody that hates women. Get out of my bed. And don't come back until your dick is bigger. <laughs> Ladies with an attitude. Fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Strike the pose, there's nothing to it. If I got permission from my partner, I would, uh, I would. And if Madonna really, really wanted me, I'd sleep with her, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe Michelle has stayed out all night, all night to queue for Madonna. But then she's used to camping it, now, isn't she? It, it rained last night out. as well, you know, she'll be like soaked. Well, the thing is, I mean, I would have liked, I wouldn't mind doing that really. I mean, that's fine by me, but. Having such a good time with you lot. I wanted to get some sleep. I'm very, very tired.
tired, extremely tired. I mean, all night was a complete nightmare and there's nowhere to go to the toilet, everything's completely locked up. Nowhere to go and buy anything to eat. It was raining and it was horrible and there was nowhere to shelter and I was lonely and I was like, oh, please bring my friends back. <laughs> But once once I see her tonight, it's all going to be well worth, you know, the, the wait and, and everything else that I've been through. Well worth it. Madonna, Madonna. How many times have we been told that women peak sexually in their mid to late 30s? Men peak at something like 15 and a half, when it's not even legal. And she's, you know, in the end, her music videos were just like mini porn movies, really. <laughs> with a good backing track. Pernicious influence on today's youth. It was like going back to the 1950s, you know. Um, they just found her very, very threatening, I think. She's a very controlling... I had the feeling Madonna would be in her house, summon somebody who she really fancies. It doesn't matter whether they're a big star, a sportsman or whatever, and they'll come running. Do the naughty with them and then give them the cab fare and say toodle pip. And you do get the feeling she did that. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I do that sort of thing. It's outrageous. <laughs> you don't go to a pop concert to watch someone um, masturbate, or do you? I mean, all the young rap boys, they're always grabbing at their crotches, aren't they? It's always mm -mm -mm, like that. But she actually sort of, you know, I think she went up to the elbow. I do remember her demonstrating how to give a blowjob on a bottle of water. I think it was a Perrier bottle or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't that good. Doing uh, uh, a message of uh, freedom. Because what does she do? It's like more freedom. Be yourself, life, what you want to do. And this is always what she has done and she's still doing, you know. I think it's quite incredible. Is Madonna. Isn't this book of yours just another example of you using sex to sell something? No, not at all, Jeremy. But you're just using your body to get whatever you want. I don't think I am, Jeremy. Yeah, no, on second thoughts, I entirely agree with you. I remember the first time opening the book, the sex book, and I was just like, oh, God. Madonna needs to sell 800,000 copies around the world just to break even on this project. And even if it is a success, after sex, what does she do for an encore? I wasn't offended, I just... I was just titillated. I dare you to be a man and not flick through the pages of her book. I think we all did, and we all had a favourite shot. Have you got the new Madonna book yet? Um, I've seen no. bits of it. <laughs> it's actually quite heavy, you know, especially if you're holding it in one hand. <laughs> I mean, mine was her hanging from the wall, nude. I thought that was art of the highest quality. I haven't, it leaves a, a, an image in my brain and in my mind that will never go away. In fact, if my wife would let me, I'd have that picture on the wall. Artistically, you do need people like Madonna to push the boundaries. Whatever you think of it, you need people like that to do that. Because if she didn't, two years down the line, you know, Claire from Steps would have done it, and that would have been shocking. The sex book was a miscalculation. She'd already... Um, established herself as a woman who was willing to wear sex on her sleeve. And I think she she some she just got too one track minded at that point. I think it took her a long time for her career to recover in, in PR terms from the disaster that was the sex book. Express yourself, don't repress yourself. Express yourself, don't repress yourself. Express yourself, don't repress yourself. I think that's when maybe she became a bit of a joke. And I think we felt that yeah, we've had enough of you, you know, we don't want to see any more of you. You know, less is more, in a way. Can we have an intelligent question, please? Uh, Dennis, BBC. Uh, you've had most of your anatomy photographed. 
Uh, I wonder if you, if you thought about maybe bringing out a book and letting us see a few internal organs, possibly your kidneys, uh, fallopian tubes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Madonna, you, you, Madonna, you've had your navel pierced. Do you, do you think you can have your brain pierced so you can have a stud in your head 24 hours a day? I kind of lost a bit of interest then at erotica because there was Vogue, wasn't there? And then Justify My Love and then erotica. And it came like that. And Vogue was great. Justify My Love's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're doing the sex thing. That's great. And then erotica. So, all right, stop. Former laundry worker slept soundly in his West London flat last night, oblivious of the fact that a song that he wrote 20 years ago was winning a Grammy Award in America for Madonna. Zephyr in the sky at night, I wonder. Tears of morning. Sing, baby, the sun. Got us off the universe, come quickly. She's imparted a lot of energy and uh, life. This original was quite, quite sort of subdued. A very spiritual song, but now it's uh, a disco hit. <laughs> She's very good in an A&R sense at discovering new talent. I think she's got a very good ear. She knows what she likes and she knows um, how to approach a market and she knows what's going to sell. To produce Ray of Light, Madonna enlisted the help of yet another obscure British talent, William Orbit. The Madonna world is, was light years away from where I was. I was doing kind of um, electronic, ambient, Records. Your heart is not open, so I must go. Nothing that you know, the person at home would have heard of. I, love you so. Freedom I think she thought I was an incredible space case, and she made it very clear that she's something along the lines: I'm not the kind of girl that just goes away and comes back when it's all done. She was there to produce, and that meant that she was going to be there all the time, and very much involved, and I better get used to it. Someone like Madonna has every angle covered uh, and you get the impression that she is an absolute tyrant and I love that. She's a control freak like all these people are and um, it's both attractive and repellent at the same time. And so you could say, well, that makes you a rather heartless person. I would say it makes you very professional. And there's so many amateurs in pop, you don't stay the course unless you're a professional. She doesn't care what other people think. I think, I think that's very empowering for, you know, teenagers and just women in general, you know, to not try to please anybody else except yourself. And that's exactly what she does. And I really respect that. She disappeared after the whole people got bored of the sex thing, came back with Ray of Light looking all sort of hippie and, well, she's like a chameleon. She can, you know, I was really sort of, wow. I mean, we used to have a joke about her and call her the psychic vampire. Which is not... A uh, completely derogatory term because you could also apply it to David Bowie, for example. And these are people who morph apparently effortlessly into somebody else. OK, Mitch, what's next, please? OK, now Madonna has reinvented herself again. We've had the sexy phase, the religious phase, the Indian phase, and now, after winning four Grammys last week, this is the, uh, I think, the Japanese scary phase. Be the same because of you It's, it's quite mad, but isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, okay, but you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Her defense, you guys are going to be doing the jerky dance in six months, in no, three no, months. No, no, no. Hello, Austin. Hey, Basil, how are you? We need your help. Someone is seducing our top agents. As you can see, she's a master of disguise. Oh, <laughs> ew. I think 
a lot of time she wears wigs. That looks really good, actually. We are particularly fond of people who admire Britain and stick two fingers up at the States. I think we do like that a lot and that has endeared her massively to the British public, I think. If you read our tabloids, which obviously we all do, um, you start to believe that we are a nation of slightly remedial people that get totally giddy about the fact that Madonna, Madonna likes us. Hey, did you know, isn't it great? Madonna really likes us. I'm not even sure about what Madonna likes about being in Britain. Maybe she doesn't need as many bodyguards here and therefore it's cheaper. I have no idea, because it certainly isn't the weather. I've always loved many aspects of England. Really? Yeah, what, uh, what, what, what sort of things? Um, well, you know, the shopping centres, the burger joints, the donut shops, yeah. you know, the multiplex cinemas. Well, wait, hang know. on, we got all that off you a lot, didn't we? Eh? Uh, I was being ironic, Parky. Oh. That was irony. <laughs> 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 Is you Madonna? Are you my driver? Is you Madonna? Your Babylons look less big than they do on the telly, but I still definitely would. You wish. I do, actually. All day, guests swept into secluded Skibo, including Sting and the designer Donatella Versace, fueling rumours she had designed the bridal gown. It's the whelk-breathed, you know, cockney charm of Guy Ritchie, despite the fact that actually he's a bit of an aristo on the quiet, isn't he? And how do you feel about having Madonna as a prospective daughter-in-law? Well, I feel very honoured. <laughs> somebody as talented as that, yes. The happy couple clearly felt that last night's baptism of baby Rocco had guaranteed enough publicity. Today's wedding was strictly out of bounds. The wedding was very much behind closed doors. To be honest, we didn't, we weren't even sure it happened. What is fascinating, I think, and says a lot about Madonna in the year 2001, is that we haven't seen a picture of her wedding. I don't know what her dress looked like. I've not seen a picture of her dress. I've not seen a picture of Guy's suit. I mean, most celebs these days, I mean, she could make two million pounds from OK Magazine alone, but she hasn't felt the need to. She's besotted by him, and he's a lovely guy. He's a charming person, and she's deeply in love with him. This guy was dumped for me. First of all, how's married life, you guys? Fabulous. What, what, what's guy. the best thing? About, yeah, it's fabulous. <laughs> what, what's the best thing about married life for you two? <laughs> and I have danced for him. I think the responsibility of being a mother with two children has actually changed her enormously with regards to, and I think, you know, the kind of lifestyle she's chosen with regards to who she's married and everything uh, has, it's kind of made her a little more uh, normal. She's kind of thought, oh, right, OK. I'll live life a bit differently. I won't have to go out with 15 minors. I won't have limos on standby 24 hours a day. And I think we've 
seen evidence of that, you know, through her, where she turns up in London. You know, she will turn up at funny little restaurants. She will turn up at the local boozer in West London. She used to say to us, you know, where do you guys go? And myself and the engineers and everyone, I said, well, we're going to the pub. I said, why don't you come to, with us? And she said, no, I can't do that. I can't go to the pub and have a drink. And I always thought that was incredibly sad. And then uh, uh, the last time I saw her, I actually met her in a pub. Madge, love, there's no need to go down the pub. They're grim places. You don't have to make us love you more by going to the pub and drinking this ghastly beer. She certainly has become Madge, although Guy seems to call her the missus most of the time now. First of all, I'd like to big up the missus. Now she's entered into a kind of establishment. I suppose what I found quite nauseating was that the whole world chose to uh, publish the picture of her and uh, Lola, her daughter, with a uh, guy at the car wash. And I felt like saying, oh, hold the front page, you know, woman wash his car. Seven hundred miles. The concert's over. Hello. <laughs> Was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> it was astounding, wasn't I'm it? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm blown away. I, I'm, I'm more than blown away. As soon as she came on stage, I was just in tears, crying my eyes out. Yeah. It was it absolutely, absolutely rocked. Absolutely came, rocked. She came right up to us and really? pointed at us and you know sang to us. <laughs> She looked amazing. She did. Yeah, she looked amazing. She did she? Amazing. Where were you? Were you that side or the other side? Life is a mystery. Everyone must stand alone. I hear you call my name and it feels like home. In the midnight hour, I can feel your power just like a break. Like a virgin, hey! touched for the very first time. Like a virgin, when your heart beats next to mine. Get into the groove, boy, you've got to prove much higher your love to me, yeah. <laughs> Borderline Feels like I'm going to lose my mind You just keep on pushing my love Over the borderline Love isn't true, 
it's just something that we do Tell me everything or nothing But please don't tell me to stop Don't you ever... There you go. <laughs>